Hello and welcome back to my absolute deep dive into insanity, where I try my best to play and review every game in my PC library. Now, I hear you asking, Jed, has your library grown since the last video? By how many games? To that I answer, please leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. It's definitely, look, it's definitely not like 90 or something crazy like that. Like definitely not, okay? So just get that out of your head. Anyway, just to vaguely restate the rules so we're deathly clear, the point of getting through it is to give each and every game in my library an equal chance. I must play every game for at least 45 minutes. I have to give at least one pro, one con, and a score out of 10. And I have to enter every game with a totally open mind. Now, I feel that's enough dilly-daddling. Dilly-daddling. I really wrote dilly-daddling there. Okay. <laughs> and I'm ready to jump right in. This is Getting Through It. So with our opening game comes a slight confession. The reason these videos have come somewhat later than expected is because I've kind of grown this obsession with board games over the past year. At this point in time, I don't have the Game of Thrones board game, so with that in mind, I can't properly comment on how good a job it does of emulating the feeling of the board game. But after playing this digital edition and getting an okay grasp of it, I regret not getting the board game earlier so that I could. What I can comment on, however, is what I like and dislike about the general way the game plays and how its mechanics tie into themes. I've been re-watching Game of Thrones recently, and frankly, all I've really wanted since is to play a game that properly simulates the way politics and deception is represented in that show, as my favorite aspect of the show is characters gaining different alliances and relationships and seeing how that plays out. And unfortunately, this game isn't really that at all, but what it is, is a very well thought out, interesting war game with a really good amount of strategy and tactics. Some of the deeper rules about determining turn order and that kind of stuff I didn't quite understand. But the main way the game is played is that you determine what area you control is going to do during a planning phase. Then simultaneously everyone reveals those plans you decide on. And then in turn order, everyone then does that action. Whether it's gaining more crowns, marching your units into another territory. Look, I, I was gonna talk about like all the rules to my understanding, but I, I really don't wanna bore you. <laughs> there's, there's too much and we'll be here all day if you listen to me talk about each and every rule. So what I will talk about is what works really well with this game. <laughs> I don't remember that character. I wonder what this art is based on. I guess it's their own interpretation, right? Because it doesn't, it's not based on the show at all. She's meant to be like an older lady, isn't she? Why does she, anyway, fuck it. Why do I have negative one? Oh, this is not good. <laughs> this is not good at all. What the fuck is the point? Oh, I'm so awful at this fucking game. <laughs> so terrible. For me, that's kind of the map control and the thinking that goes into deciding your actions and timing out what to do first and what to save for later. It's really fun picking out what kind of strategy to start with and seeing how it plays out and dealing with anything that goes awry. It's fun keeping track of who's in front and what things they're doing to keep them there so that eventually, hopefully, you can try to play it against them. What doesn't work for me in this game is the randomness of the Westeros phase. During my game, I think we had to bid on the various leaderships like five times in a row, which was really exhausting and frustrating because it kept seeing that I would get the leadership I want only for it to be snatched away from me moments later, which made me wonder what the point in trying was. I don't want to. So sick of doing this fucking track every time. <sighs> What's the point? It also feels like it extends out the game slightly further than it should, as I have to watch each and every player muster troops and make various decisions, when I feel it should all be done at once. I feel this system should also lead more credence into the political aspect of the game than it does, giving players more opportunities to interact politically rather than just through the map and combat. As it stands right now, you can only make alliances superficially, and put out warnings of other players, all of which have absolutely no impact on the actual game itself. 
It's really strange to say, but this is a really fantastic war strategy game, but not really the best Game of Thrones game, in my opinion. There's two board games, in my opinion, which I feel sit closer to the feeling of a Game of Thrones game, neither of which I've actually played, mind you, but one being The King's Dilemma, a game about making decisions for the king representing various houses, and the other being Oath, a very complicated game where one person is the Chancellor of Lands and every other player is in exile trying to overthrow them through land control or whatever it is, but also through political power, through the denizens of the land, and from actual interactions from the other players. Oath is a game I'm literally dying to play with somebody else. But for this digital edition of a clearly really great board game, I have to give the Game of Thrones board game, digital edition, a strong 8 out of 10. House Martell won. Faction I, I literally don't remember from the show at all. I did so fucking bad. A Plague Tale Innocence is a narrative-driven stealth puzzle game about a girl and her younger brother trying to survive in a plague-ridden land during the Hundred Year War between England and France which is just the perfect subject matter for my lighthearted gaming comedy video. Just really fantastic. So I played just over an hour of this one, and I think I went through all the game introductions to its various sections, including its walking sections, stealth sections, running sections, and rat sections. Uh, if I were to describe to you what you do in these various sections, you'd probably think, okay, I've done that in literally every other game. What makes this one special? To that I have to answer, I, I really don't know. I've heard a lot of people raving about this game, saying it's one of the best games to ever come out. I find this slightly confusing. Not to say that this is a bad game, but really all that's worth noting here is its beautiful graphics and great story. Those are literally the only two things this game has going for it, and it's just enough to push it over the line for me. All of its gameplay sections are very bare bones and lack any complexity or challenge as far as I'm up to. In the stealth sections, you throw things to distract enemies, which is something you've done in every fucking game you've ever played. I don't know about you, but if I heard something bang against a pan, I would not walk up and stare directly at the pan. That It just seems very odd. The running sections lack a lot of tension as well, as you pretty much just run where the game obviously tells you to go and it'll be fine. There's really no challenge to these bits, along with the rat sections, despite me dying the most during these. Though the rat sections definitely intrigued me the most, as it started to show some elements of maybe interesting puzzles, but if the rest of the game's quote unquote puzzles are just finding hanging things to shoot down, I'd be pretty disappointed. Looking is not a puzzle in any scenario. But anyway, I don't want to sound too harsh on this game, as I'm pretty much right at the start. And this moment right here really hooked me in to see what the rest of it has to show. I love a game that only shows its weird twisted side sporadically, making it all the more interesting. I should also mention that the sound and music is very good. The music does a great job to convey the right emotions with the right ambience, and the sound work is really good. I especially love the sling, as it has this really satisfying whip to it that works really well. So this might be a game I have to come back to and give an actual formal review. For now, I'll give Plague Tale Innocence a 7 out of 10. A Short Hike is a delightfully cute and fun game about going on a short walk up a mountain to get cell phone reception, which is just such a silly and cute premise. I love it so much. This is going to be a game that's really hard for me to criticize. In fact, I like this game so much that I asked my girlfriend to have a go. You're in. What do I do? You gotta go to Hoff Peak. Okay, where's that? Let me run. Oh my god, that's so funny. You can pick up that. Oh. Hell yeah, dude. You're in it's rainy time raining. now. Oh, now it's fine. <laughs> yeah, over there it's raining, but over here it's not. And <laughs> right, now jump off and fly. Yep. It's There's done. a treasure chest it's there. This way. Oh, oh, it's this way. You. <laughs> Maybe? No. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Ah, oh, I boys! Come back! Oh, shovel! Shovel! 
Everything about it is just so pleasant, fun, clever, but I, I guess I'll start with the gameplay, as that's the main draw of this game in my eyes. The game's name, and from looking at all the screenshots, you might think this game is just a cute walking simulator, but it's so much more than that. Movement feels really fluid and quick, so walking doesn't ever feel boring. And more so, if you get a jump off the ground, you get to glide around, which is so fun and satisfying, it's hard not to do it at every chance you get. On top of that though, the main draw of this game that differentiates it from being a walking sim is just how much there is to discover and explore in this game. Every aspect of this game's design encourages you to walk off every beaten path and explore every single nook and cranny, even including swimming out as far as you can go in the water. I thought I was being sneaky when the first thing I did in this game was walk in the opposite direction. But no, I was immediately rewarded and immediately learned something new about this game's world. Truly brilliant. Every character you speak to has something either new to say, a new task to give, or engages in a new game mode. You never at all feel discouraged in doing everything and anything and talking to everybody. The music is fantastic as well. It fits really well with everything you're doing in the game, and its programming is perfect, building in more exciting moments and mellowing out when things go quiet. It's got this really bubbly, cute, inquisitive aesthetic to it. Its style, mixed with how it's programmed into the game, pushes further this feeling of exploration and movement, and it perfectly fits the way the game looks. So, this game is obviously a 3D pixel aesthetic game, like an old 3DS game or something like that. But what's great is you can decide how big you want the pixels, if at all, which I think is fantastic. I love how all the colors in this game pop. Everything visually is so charming and fun, it's hard to look away. I love how cute all the other characters are, I love how different each part of the island looks, and I love the way feathers pop out of you when you're trying to flap higher. This might lead to my only criticism though, which is that some of the game's visuals do feel quite derivative of Animal Crossing. Clearly that was an inspiration for this game, and that's fine, but going a step further and also clearly taking certain context elements like fishing or dig spots is a small step too far for me. It's a belief of mine that if your game at any point makes me think of a different game, Rather than immersing me in this game, you're doing something wrong. This is just Animal Crossing. Look at that. Yes, he certain. That's my kind of one criticism I kind of gave is that certain things are kind of derivative of Animal Crossing. Yeah, the trees look a little like Animal Crossing trees too, like these ones, the cedar trees. Yeah, that can be hard to avoid, so I get it. But like, yeah. yeah, with the concept of other things being derivative of Animal Crossing, it then lends to that. So. They, they should have tried slightly harder to avoid that comparison, I think. Mm -hmm. There's the thought of like, oh, this is kind of like Animal Crossing, to then, oh, that's just from Animal Crossing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's two very different thoughts, and one's negative and one's positive. Yeah, yeah. But in the greater context of a short hike, it's only a mild criticism. A short hike is priced very appropriately for its length and size on Steam. You absolutely could not go wrong picking this up at all. It's a very solid 9 out of 10. A while back, a roaring 25 of you have the potential to remember I played a game called Anvil of Dawn, an unintentionally terrifying dungeon crawler which I bought hoping it'd have Lovecraft horror themes, which obviously it, it didn't, because why would it? No clue would made me think that at all. I feel like I'm in a nightmare right now, like honestly. But here we are, with Aeon of Sands, a game which vaguely answers that call, a dungeon crawler really beautifully eerie and unsettling art, atmosphere, and really solid old school gameplay to top it off. I have a lot of games like this, probably far more than I can justify given it's a genre I have never had any interest in, but for what it is, I really enjoyed this one. I love its really strange way of storytelling by giving the player information and giving the player the option to question that information and the game outright saying, look, it doesn't matter, it's just a narrative device. It's really weird and hilarious, and for some reason, in this game, it really works. I think it has to do with just how strange the art and world is. That outright fourth wall breaking only helps further unsettle the player, building a stronger aesthetic. Something I've never seen before, or at least pulled off well. The gameplay for Aeon of Sands is just like any other grid-based dungeon crawl you've played. It's fun and awkward at the same time, finding secrets feels satisfying, 
more often than not, you'll get lost and have to really study the map for something you've missed, or a way back. I enjoyed the game's opening dungeon as it slowly got weirder and more frightening the further you go. I imagine teasing how odd the game itself gets the further you go as well. In terms of gameplay, it's hard to fault, as all its systems feel like they're working exactly as intended. But now I have to say some negatives. In the same sense as I mentioned before, the game does feel archaic. The controls take some getting used to, and frankly, getting lost doesn't feel that great in a game like this, whether it's part of the game's design or not. It's very unclear which weapons are throwable, which aren't, and which ones will break, and which won't. I'm not sure if this is intentional, but I didn't quite enjoy it. With that being said, I find it hard to imagine the arcade controls not being intentional. I like that feeling of mastering them and getting used to the game's flow, and I really want to see where this game goes in terms of story and lore. Frankly, all I can say is if this genre of game interests you, and you like feeling very unsettled, I'd highly recommend this one. Solid 8 out of 10. Air Memories of Old is a light puzzle narrative game with a really beautiful art and fantastic gameplay. At the start, I was a little unsure. I wasn't the biggest fan of the animations and I wasn't really sure how good the gameplay would feel throughout. But if you listen real close to this clip, you can hear the moment the game won me over. Holy shit! Oh, this is uh... Oh, this is really good. <laughs> Oh, oh, I see. This is really good. Oh, okay, got it. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so this is really good. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, shit. Okay, well, this is really good, as it turns out. So, uh, yeah, just, oh, fucking shit my ass. Fuck my butt. The flying is so good. I could do it for hours, it's so good. Traversing the world feels truly fantastic, which is the most important part of a game like this. Narrative and gameplay go hand in hand most often. If the gameplay sucks, I'm not going to care about your narrative. If the narrative is god awful, I'm not going to stick to the gameplay. A story about my uncle is an excellent example of the latter. There's not a lot to say about this one. I mean, I beat it in two hours and I had a great time. The only thing I wanted was for the ground gameplay to be slightly faster and more fluid as that's where the most important sections of the game are. They only brought the game down slightly though, and I'd still recommend this one. It's like a weak 7 out of 10. Oh god. Oh, I don't want to fucking play this, man. I really- <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Shit sucks. Shit fucking sucks. I'm not interested in this. I'm skipping it. Waste my fucking time. That's so weird. I've never seen that before. That sound, you know, when my mouse over thing makes a sound, that's coming through my speakers, but the music is coming through my headphones. I have, n I have never seen that before in my entire life. Yeah, I I, none of this means anything to me. N none of this means anything to me. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. Oh my fucking god. Yep, yep, yep. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. All this lore is the same as anything else. Like, oh, there's the 12 gods, but the gods fought and then died, but. You you fight for King Carcricus, and he's he's in the downward of his of his reign and rebellion. It's like goddamn, and an imperfect world. Okay, I'm done with that. <laughs> what was that? What? Oh, it was just a dream. Oh no. I had this- is that that dream you had? This is like, for context, this is my second time playing this. Because the first time I went in without an open mind, 
and I only did 25 minutes. So I'm playing it again a few months later, and like my, I still feel the same. I've tried to go in a bit more open to it. This shit sucks. It sucks. Like this camera panning between these two like still images that aren't moving with this story that's just boring as fuck. Just, just fucking boring. I can't help but feel like this shit is like an aggressive waste of my time. Like the pan to him. Three dots appeared and then it panned back to like it's just such a waste of my fucking time. I could be doing anything better with my damn life. Anything. I like an esoteric book that has nothing in it. <laughs> yeah, fucking blast. <laughs> and this music is like the most generic, like, rock music you could ever hear. Like, ever. <laughs> Said that Lionheart took him down and then got grass. Like, Oh dude, I fucking killed it. I'm so fucking good at egg arrest. Egg arrest to generations of war. Here we go, dude. Yeah. It's this shit. It's this shit why no one fucking wants to play this shit. It's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to have this in front of me right now. I hate it. He's gonna kill a little girl. Oh no, I guess he's the villain. I wonder if that guy's the villain. Oh, here's a- like, it's so embarrassing. It's so embarrassing. I have to kill her, she's a bad- she's bad. How could you kill a little girl? I'm- I- the good guy and I won't allow a little girl to be killed. But, Lionheart, what the fuck? You gotta kill the little girl. I'm not killing little girl. The little girl done the dirt to die. Look at my face, I'm angry now! <sighs> There was a big group of people that made this, you know? And then we're standing in the same field that we were standing in before. Like, it's so lazy and it's so boring. I don't know what, like, benefit there'd be to moving around. I don't see any reason to. Like, I may as well just stay exactly where I am and try and kill them, right? Like... Like, <laughs> what did it do? What was the point? <laughs> Stupid. What the fuck? Just like the footsteps. Fuck this shit, dude. Fuck, fuck this shit. Oh my god, it's the guy from his dream. That's the guy from his dream. Fuck this shit. I fucking, I fucking love this game, man. Age of Empires 2 is a delight to play. But for those who don't know, it's it's a real-time strategy game where you build up a little base and start producing military units and then go and fucking destroy the enemy base with everything you've got. But look, there's far more to it than that, especially if you're looking at the campaign missions, but that's as far as my brain can comprehend. The controls are so smooth, the gameplay is so much fun, and I really love the music, especially that one song with a lot of organs. Uh, I love all the sounds the units make. They're they're a lot of fun to me. Comanche, Abicha, Ok, J, but nay. Also, this updated version of the game has such beautiful, fantastic visuals that convey all the information they need while still capturing that original essence of the original game. And the updates to gameplay are absolutely welcome. I love finally having a unit that can auto scout. Finally. But that being said, dead units don't turn into skeletons anymore, which I find really sad. Now, I have two gripes though. One is completely unrelated, because I bought the HD edition and all of its DLC, and then not even a year later, they announced this remake that's a million times better that I still had to pay for, which I'm, I'm still pretty salty about. My other gripe is that at the start of the game, there's just a lot of sitting around and waiting for numbers to go up. And I kinda always dread this stage because it just feels like I'm not doing anything or I'm doing something wrong. But no, that's just kinda how it goes. And look, there's a lot more I could say about this and I could talk about Age of Empires 2 for forever. 
but I, I wouldn't be saying anything you haven't already heard and there's a million videos out there that go into much greater detail. I don't have enough time in this video to talk about everything that is great about this game. So I'm just gonna leave it at a very solid 9 out of 10. Hey, thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to toss me a like and to subscribe for more content like this and my Game Dive series. Follow me on any socials linked below, including a Steam group you can join if you want to come hang out with me and play some games together. I've had to cut this video sort of short. I still have like half a script left, but I think I'd never get this video done if I didn't cut it off here, given that I finished the edit three months ago and couldn't bring myself to continue past that. Um, if you really love my content and want to support me further, I do have a Patreon linked below. Any small amount would help me produce better content, as I do have a very busy job outside of this, so if this became more financially viable for me, I'd probably make videos a little more frequently, as I do all the music and all the production and everything to do with these videos. Anyway, I hope you're all having a lovely day, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers!